Over the last two months, virtually every single movie that was scheduled to come out has either been delayed or postponed indefinitely. So today I'm gonna to give you my picks for the 10 biggest disappointing movie delays of 2020. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share which delays are most disappointing to you, whether because the delay is so long or because you are so excited to see the movie. As I looked at my list, I also kind of factored in which one of the delays were kind of like the shock moments for me. Like, oh, this is really happening. Those ones in particular were like a gut punch to me. Also, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page where I'm gonna discuss five more movies that got delayed. They weren't necessarily the biggest disappointments, but there was something interesting about the delay. As you go through this video, you'll notice certain big gigantic movies I didn't talk about. They're probably over in that video and let's get started. At number 10 for me is going to be Morbius. Now, I wasn't bananas for the Morbius trailer. I was morbidly curious about the trailer because it is kind of a horror vampire comic book movie. And then it has that big reveal at the end where it appears Vulture's gonna be in it. And so this one is kicking off, let me see the name of this one. The the Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters. This movie's the one where it seems like they're actually gonna start tying it together. Obviously, we've already seen the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, we've got Venom, but this is the one where they're starting to have connective tissue uh, and creating their own little pocket Sony Marvel characters shared universe. And because of that, I'm a little bit more curious about it. And anytime they do a comic book movie, that's different. So being that it's horror based, I'm a little bit interested in it. And they delayed it nine months. That's a big, almost a year long delay. We'd already seen a trailer for it. It's like, ooh, how's Vulture gonna tie into this? Will Tom uh, Holland make an appearance? Will we see Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock? I had all these questions in my mind and then it got delayed nine months from this July to next March. And so that's pretty disappointing. Number nine is Infinite. This is a new Antoine Fuqua action sci-fi thriller starring Dylan O'Brien and Mark Wahlberg. Just with that right there, I'm sold. I don't know really much of anything about the plot beyond that. I'm not familiar with the source material, but Antoine Fuqua is kind of like one of the premier action thriller directors right now that's doing these throwback action movies. So I'm always intrigued whenever he's doing something. Throw the word sci-fi into it. You add that extra layer of intrigue for me. I've been really enjoying Mark Wahlberg recently, and I've wanted to see Dylan O'Brien show up in more stuff. I actually dug him in, uh, was it American Assassin? that came back a few years. It wasn't a fantastic movie, but I thought he did a good job in it. So the idea that you're teaming Mark Wahlberg, Dylan O'Brien, Antoine, tu <laughs> Antoine Tutois, that's not a name, Antoine Fuqua up for a sci-fi action thriller. I am on board for every single one of those things. And then it got delayed, which is supposed to come out in just a couple months from now. Another one pushed back like seven or eight months, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to wait to see what they've got mixed up with all these different things coming together. Number eight is Ghostbusters Afterlife. I grew up watching the original Ghostbusters film as well as the TV show, The Real Ghostbusters. So this is one of these franchises that has with, been with me my entire lifetime. The channel Sean Chandler talks about started because I posted a movie review of the 2016 Girls remake of Ghostbusters. So I'm also kind of indebted to this franchise because it changed my life. And I dug the trailer that they put out for it. it I kind of like the vibe that they're moving away from New York City, but it's still tied to the original franchise. I really enjoy Paul Rudd. So it seems different enough, but tied to the original enough that it's just the right mix. And then it got delayed nine months from July back to next March, which seems to be what um, Sony is doing with a number of their different releases. So that one was a punch in the gut because I was looking forward to see what they were going to do with this franchise continuing the story 30 plus years later. Next up is Top Gun Maverick. Some of my earliest memories of watching 
movies as a family was watching Top Gun and my parents kicking me out of the room when the sex scene happened. And so Top Gun is another one of these movies that's just some of my earliest childhood memories are of watching Top Gun. My parents had the soundtrack on a record, an old vinyl. We actually, we still have it. And so I listened to the soundtrack on repeat when I was growing up. And this has been one of these long delayed development hell type projects that finally has been filmed and they put out multiple trailers for it. And man, they hit all the right nostalgia buttons for me. And it just, I was getting amped to check out this film. Seemed like they figure out how, how to bring it back and have it feel right and not just feel dated. And then all of this happened and it got pushed back six months. And so after already waiting 35 years for this movie, we got to wait six more months. Now, it's only a six month delay, but boy, am I excited for this movie. Coming in at number six is F9. This movie was delayed a full year. In general, kind of these main series Fast and Furious movies, um, they're great to see in the theater, but some of my excitement is getting a, is dwindling just a little bit because, well, it's the ninth one, so we've seen a lot of what uh, Vin Diesel has up his sleeves. And the trailer itself was just all the stupidity that you'd kind of expect, bringing characters back from the dead, new family ties and everything. So it, it's hitting all the stuff that I kind of want, but it's that year-long delay that is just so disappointing. I mean, we were supposed to be watching that movie in about a week, literally a week from now, and now it's going to be a year and a week, which is crazy. We've already seen a trailer and we have to wait so much longer to see whatever craziness that they've got planned for this movie. And it looks like they've got all kinds of melodrama and crazy planned a year from now. Bringing us into the top five is Black Widow. If you know anything about my channel, you know that I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is one of my absolute favorite movie franchises of all time. And I'm excited for Black Widow. It looks pretty good. Um, it wouldn't be like a top level of excitement for a Marvel Cinematic movie film. Um, and it's only been delayed about six months, so not like a whole year full disappointment. The thing that's disappointing about this delay is, first off, we were supposed to see it two weeks ago. Second, this was supposed to be the big kickoff of phase four. That's really what I'm most, most interested in with this movie. It's like, where are they headed? What is this movie going to tease? How is it all going to play together to help us understand what their plan is for phase four? You know, kind of going back in time and telling a Black Widow story. I want to see that, but it's not like top level excitement. But seeing where phase four is going, absolutely. I can't wait to see that and I was supposed to see it two, three weeks ago, and now we have to wait until November. At number four is actually Spiral from the Book of Saw. As I was kind of looking at which delays actually really disappointed me, this one actually came to mind. Maybe it's because I already rewatched all of the previous Saw movies in anticipation of this movie coming out. And the simple fact of how weird the team up is of Chris Rock coming in as a big, gigantic fan of the franchise and being like, hey, I've got some ideas. They got Samuel L. Jackson. It just seems like they're trying to do something big and different with it. And they delayed do poked, like announcing the delay pretty late into the game and they pushed it back an entire year. And so I was fully amped up, like, where are they going to go with this thing? All prepared. I've got notes. I could do my updated ranking and everything. All I needed to do was watch this movie. And then it got pushed back a year. And so that one in particular, was like, whoa, oh man, pushing that one back. I thought they might drop it on VOD. I think, think that they're made cheap enough that they could have potentially been still profitable doing that. But they went, nope, let's push it back a full year. For me, that was just a big disappointment. Some of you might have seen some social media posts I made last week. There was a picture of me holding up my movie pass credit card saying I was off to go see Spiral at the theaters. It was a joke. I didn't actually see the movie. It was a joke because movie pass went out of business. Theaters are closed and Spiral has been delayed a year. So a bunch of people have been asking me my take on Spiral. I haven't seen it and I'm not going to see it for another year. Real quick before I give you my top three, remember to share your disappointments down below in the comment section. Our lists are going to be very different because there's different reasons we were excited for different movies and different things frustrate each one of us. So be sure to let me know which ones were you most excited for and most disappointed by that delay. 
Likewise, remember, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page. Join at any level and you can see that video. And once we're done with this one, you'll realize I didn't talk about some major delays. And so if you're wondering my thoughts on those ones, they're over in the other video. They just weren't some of my biggest disappointments for various reasons, but you can check it out over on my Patreon page. In third place is New Mutants, the movie that just cannot catch a break. They put out the first trailer for this movie I think in 2017 or 2018, they filmed it three or four years ago and then it kept getting delayed. Then they were going to do reshoot shoots and then Disney acquired Fox and then they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do with it. They announced the April release date. I really thought it was going to happen. And then what happened? The entire universe shut down and the movie got delayed once again. And people have been wondering, why don't they just drop it on Disney Plus? Why don't they just put it on Hulu? Uh, my understanding is there's actually a legal agreement where Fox has first streaming rights or excuse me, HBO has first streaming rights for Fox properties. And that deal is still in place, which is why like Dark Phoenix, which Fox made it. But by the time it came out, it was under Disney. It streamed first on HBO, which is a competitor to Disney Plus as well as Hulu, because Fox has that cut that deal with them years back. And I'm pretty sure that's why you can't just drop New Mutants on one of the Disney owned streaming services. But this is one of these movies we've been waiting, waiting to see this final X-Men kind of piece of cinema. It's not really an X-Men movie, but it's kind of tied to it because of mutants. And it just keeps getting delayed. Looks like it's going to come out August 28th, which is one of the worst weekends of the year, most years. But if it actually comes out, it'll probably be a decent weekend. And who knows if it'll actually happen because this cursed movie just keeps getting delayed. My runner up is A Quiet Place 2. For me, this was the movie where I went, oh, this whole thing's coming down. The day that they announced that this movie was delayed, that really legitimately was the day where everything sunk in. This is the real deal. Things are about to change. Things are about to start just locking down very quickly. And it all started on a Thursday. I believe I was sitting right over there at my other desk and I learned that this movie was getting postponed or they didn't have a release date for it anymore. And I went, oh no, this is, this is very, very, very serious. I was supposed to see this movie the next week or like a week out, or I don't remember exactly the dates on all of it, but I already had my invite to the press screening. It was going to be during the week of South by Southwest and my buddy Zach Pope and Griffin Schiller were in town. And so all three of us were actually going to get to go to a press screening together. And then it got delayed. And this is one of those ones that like legitimately, we were supposed to see this movie two months ago two months ago and it's not going to come out for another four or five months or whatever in September. And man, that's the ones where you just feel it. Like I've almost started to forget that it's like, it's my anticipation for it kind of disappeared because I built all the anticipation and it just didn't come out and they you know stopped all new marketing. Cause it's not like they can read, we're going to put out a new trailer or something so far out from the new release date, in which case it, even that, that I'm not as excited in a certain sense because the, it was like all the air got let out of the balloon Another one of these just massive disappointments. But the biggest disappointment for me is gonna be No Time to Die, the latest James Bond film. This one, another one that was supposed to come out about six weeks ago. I was doing a full series ranking the different Bond movies from each of the actors with my buddy Griffin, and we were building up to it. I was getting all of my anticipation and excitement, and this was the first movie that got delayed. And at the time we were like, what are they doing? Why are they overreacting? And we were speculating, oh, is it because of the plot of the movie maybe involves a, a, a pandemic or something? And they thought that that would be in poor taste. And so they decided to delay it for a different time. And I guess it was, maybe that was part of it, but they also seem to have some sort of knowledge in advance that, man, this is gonna be bad. And we, just, we do not wanna be in the middle of this. So let's push our movie back. And so this is the one that it was a movie I was very excited to see kind of this final Daniel Craig Bond film. The trailers looked really good with incredible action sequences. Seems like the odd numbers in this Daniel Craig um, version of the, the series are the good ones. So for that reason, I was excited for it. Um, I, oh, I was just building so much anticipation and it got pushed back nine months. That was just once again, it was just... Um, another one of these ones where he started to like first be like, wait a minute, this is the real deal. Something is going on in the world. And so for me, this is the one that just stands out as the biggest disappointment of them all. So it comes in 
at number one. Be sure to tell me your biggest disappointments down below in the comment section. If you want that companion video, it's over on my Patreon page. I'll talk about the Batman, Wonder Woman, Soul. What's that other one in there? Uh, um, Mulan, all of those, I'll talk about the other ones. I can't, they weren't my top 10 biggest disappointments, but there's things to say about them anyway. Let me know your thoughts down below and keep talking movies too much.